It's been a long five years. We've tried to resist. Fear and mistrust rule the galaxy. Cal, look into the fire. It will warm you, keep you company. But left unchecked, it will consume everything until there is only ash. How could you let the galaxy fall to this unworthy machine of an empire? <laughs> Hope may feel beyond her grasp. But I think we finally found somewhere the empire can't reach us. Imagine. No more looking over your shoulder. A place that's worth fighting for. No matter the cost. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, composing for games specifically has some unique challenges that film or television don't have. Because in film you're, or TV, you're dealing with sort of a finite timeline. So I have to write music starts here and needs to, you know, at X point I need to change to this tone and so on. With games, it's, it's interactive, so you're always sort of imagining all the possible scenarios that could that could arise. Music. Yeah, so it's kind of. I think the difference is. I mean, it's interesting because games are getting. It used to be that games were kind of similar to, 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 to film and TV because of the sense that we just didn't have as much complexity. But the games, the cool thing about games now is they're getting so big and yeah. so complicated. And the, the part, especially these kind of open world games where you've got a lot of choice where you can go. So musically, you know, we're finding ourselves that we're, we, we need to set a vibe and an emotion for like uh, something that could be very, very malleable. Mm. And so this, it's kind of like you know, uh, we, I, you know, we liken it. It's like you're trying to put sort of put dress someone who's running a marathon <laughs> yeah. down the road. Yeah. It's kind of basically what it is. You're trying to effectively sort of fit 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 into many potential things and, and kind of cover as many bases as you can. And, and especially mm. sort of like on the very first game we ever did with this Star Wars series, that um, we discovered quite quickly that people like to explore. People like to walk yeah. around and exactly. go look places. And we, you know, there were times we thought, oh, someone's going to spend about five minutes here, and people just had like twenty. Minutes. And it's looking at every nook and cranny. It's yeah. great. So exactly. Yeah, it's very, very technical. You know, we have you know what we call systemic music, which doesn't exist in in films. And uh, and like Stephen says, people don't know. Uh, we don't. We have to kind of play the the composers have to be very, very in the game to know, you know, who's going to be in a place for a certain amount of time, where where the kind of like the Cadillac moments are, where people are, are going to we're going to want to really go heavy on music, and where we don't need so much music. And it's not very common for to have quite a bit more music than you would have in, in a film, for example. Like a film might have an yeah, hour, hour and a half more. of music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A game eight, like this, we have about eight hours of music mm. in this one. That's such an awesome question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very hard. Well, it is. How long did we, we take? <laughs> I mean, you're also dealing with characters that can have a, like a lot of development. Because mm. in a film, I mean, you've got two hours. There's a limited amount of that you can have in that two hours. And obviously, the character can go on a huge arc during that time. Mm. But we've got like 30 hours. And so yeah. there's, 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 the, there's the depth of character exploration that, that, um, that you try and get. Um, yeah, it's also, uh, it's also it's, coming yeah, out it's with... Tricky. Coming up with unique themes as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of music themes out there, and we, we're coming up with it's a Star Wars themes as well. So that's the sure, other thing. Yeah. It's like yeah. with Star Wars, obviously, there's a there's an added added bonus where you're trying. You know, the, the benchmark yeah. has been set very very high. So, so, there's, so there's a lot of yeah. back and forth and a lot of trying out ideas that's and a lot of you know throwing things over the fence, reviewing them, passing them around. There, do you mind me saying that there was a theme? That <laughs> I don't know. Do I? That, <laughs> so because so I won't say exactly who writes what on the game. 
but um, something we never that's really our do. special yeah, yeah. secret we never say that yeah. but um but usually thematically you know either Stephen will write one theme and Gordy will write another but there was a theme where they both wrote it which I thought was a very special <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah we often well, well Gordy and I we... now have a thing where we back and forward a lot of things and just you know try try yeah. to you know it's, it's really interesting having someone you know I mean usually you're very much in a box and you're in a bubble and you're exactly. writing yeah. a score and you may be you know director and people you're working with but um but this was you know it's, it's, it's a lovely challenge because it's like you know we're, we're sort of competing against each other but also working with each other at the same time and so it's off, often we don't necessarily sort of a couple of times we've written themes and the other person said well actually that's going to work perfectly for that mm -hmm. exactly. that's the great theme for that you've written you you wrote that but it's just you called it the wrong thing yeah. um, and that, so and that yeah. competition it's it sort of drives us to be better too in a way so yeah yeah he, he sends me demos like, oh, oh my god oh my god that's, god, really that's so good <laughs> you know so I, I need to step it up and write yeah. it write a good theme as well. I see so a lot of a lot of exchange of tricks going backwards yeah, and forwards exactly. between the two of them. And we pass <laughs> ideas, you know, he'll send me a theme that said, what if you harmonized it like this or what if you changed this and did that? And mm -hmm. so we bounce ideas off of each other, even if one person starts something, the other person can sort of finish it. And mm -hmm. we've just developed a dialogue. Over, over time. And as, as a close to the one of the worst things is like you do get mornings where you wake up and you're just like, oh my God, I don't know yeah. what to do for this. <laughs> I have no idea what to do for this. And it's really nice to be able to pass that off to someone else exactly. and then pass the, their problem off to you and say like, how do I finish this? And you're like, oh, well, it's obvious. You know, it's, 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 it's nice. So Star Wars has been around for 45 years. It's probably the most recognizable. This John Williams score is probably the most recognizable piece of film or television. Yeah, it's, it's up there. Uh, what's the challenge or, or is that you guys are composing music is is there something that you do where you want to make it seem familiar that yeah this is, is star wars in the star wars universe but it's also new like i've talked about walking that line and, and yeah 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 i mean it's the balance i mean you know we kind of instead of you know looking to the scores of star wars really looked to the the music that influenced that music in yeah, particular a lot of you know music from like the you know, romantic era and that kind of thing, like classical music. So, you know, we drew a lot of inspiration from that. And then, of course, you know, we do our best mm. probably not to think too much about trying to fit into that mold. Mm. It's like as long as we're being symphonic and we understand that language, then mm. yeah. it's better just to do what feels best to us. I think so. it's, it's one of those ones where you don't want the music to be sort of like the, 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 the wallpaper on a, on a, on a, a seven-year-old's bedroom in the best possible right. way, because I mean, I had that <laughs> wallpaper. Um, but you don't, you know, one of the things when you're actually playing a Star Wars game, you don't want to, the music to be constantly doing necessarily saying, hey, you're playing a Star Wars game. Yeah. Did you forget you're playing a Star Wars game? This is a Star Wars game, by the way. <laughs> because you get that sort of kind of perpetual common commentary that mm -hmm. you can end up getting into. And it's so, so I think one of the things we did was whenever we do use the, the Williams themes, we're using them very much like just jams. It's like mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, so we, we, you know the sp the more sparing you can be, the means the more powerful that when you come to it, you know when we finally do play the force theme, and we particularly use the force theme mm -hmm. to very much towards the end of the game, only in minimal moments, a couple of like two or three, I think total. Um, but they land, you know, they land because that you know suddenly you haven't heard it for 25 hours, and suddenly mm -hmm. and that nostalgia boom, it lands, yeah. and you're just like, wow, okay, that. Yeah. But whereas if you used it all over the place, I think it, it would just it get would tiring. Say, yeah, yeah. So, dilute its its. But it, but stylistically, I mean, I think it is a lot about the ethos. I and mean, what I think what we did on this one was very much look at things like um, Empire Strikes Back, particularly being the darker one in the, the first trilogy, and saying, yeah. saying like, well, what what were they trying to do? Not what not what did they do? What were saying? What were they trying to do? What was their what was the ideas behind it? And the sort of you know the, the continuation, but sort of taking our own material and doing the same idea, the same mm. process. So sort of it's honouring the ethos yeah. as much as it yeah. is honouring the actual yeah. notes of the original score. And I know that these two on they understand understand the, the Star Wars language, you know, uh, of, of music, you know, the, the tools that the, 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 the main movies made, uh, but they've both got their own influences and styles that I happen to know kind of well, yeah. so, uh, and I know, so I know how to push their buttons, you know, say, so, well, make it a little bit like this, because you're really, really good at that, or, you know, so, uh, and I think because of that, it has its own personality. You know, we don't have to try too hard because we kind of they they kind of work off their their kind of their their, their special source that they both have. And in many cases, Nick will just give a, a suggestion that I would not have thought of, and it suddenly just sparks some inspiration. And yeah. you know, I end up doing something that I would not have done just on my own. So it's 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 great because we're kind of always creatively pushing each other. Yeah. You know? 
I know the kind of stuff they like and what gets them going. Yeah. So I just suggest that things helps. he likes. <laughs> <laughs> and, how, and how to annoy us, particularly if there's something where like, something could be better and you know we know. Yeah. yeah. And you're, you're, you, know, you know, just pressing the button. I mean, that's what a good director well, does. Well, Stephen, Stephen Barton taught me, because this guy has actually taught me quite a lot. What, one of the things he taught me was how not to second guess myself as a director. And he kind of shot himself in the foot because I don't second guess myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're, you're, it's a, you know, when people talk about music, it's like your honest reaction is often your first reaction. I mean, most people, it's funny when you get working with directors who've got, like, you know, even on films, you know, people have, like, you know, because of a lot of visual effects directors are now coming into, like, maybe directing their first movie, and you work on these films, and they've got a big budget and a massive amount attached to it. And what they end up doing is with music is they get really nervous because people are like, I, they don't, like, I don't know how to talk about music. And actually, just, yeah, I'm like, you've got reaction. Like, I'm like, anyone can direct a composer. It's just you have to, like, be able to be in touch with, like, what you're feeling and say, like, well, well this music makes me think this. Yeah. Yeah. So and a good right? composer should be able to interpret that and, yeah. and turn it into music because yeah. that's that's part of the job of what yeah. we do. It, it's right. Writing it's music is one thing. Yeah, it's actually a relatively small bit of emotion. <laughs> you know, that whole narrative. thing. Can can you manage a person and can you sort of work with a you know that that's the that yeah. where where creative you know whenever you see a good composer director relationship that's why that clicks that's why it's because they they've been able to sort of chat about this stuff because mm -hmm. it's it's you know it's a difficult thing yeah. like someone's plays you says you you know but often sits you down a director and says all right here's a piece of music what do you think and they they're expected to sort of come up with in the next two minutes like mm -hmm. all the things that they think are right or wrong in a language they might not really speak as it <laughs> yeah. were it's, yeah, it's, yeah. A, difficult I mean, it's a very so. abstract language yeah, even, even composer to composer sometimes it's hard to describe what you're what you're thoughts yeah. are or intentions are yeah so. yeah it's taken a while to to learn that and yeah. and yeah and, and, and i think the thing that really brings it all together is a common admiration for good quality coffee as well oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Coffee so in the morning, we've, bond, in the we've yeah. bonded over coffee and, <laughs> yeah. and i mean i suppose the other thing again is just on the staying on the topic of direction one of the things with these two chaps that has been different from other projects i've worked on is we are we have worked very closely together as a team and very often you know i have a composer in america and i'm in you you know, I used to be in the UK and it would be a time difference and we'd get to talk, you know, once a week maybe, you know, but with these, we, these chaps, we talk every day pretty much when yeah. we're busy with things, which really helps. Being that John Williams originally composed all of his stuff for the films, fully different medium and everything, what, um, I'm, I'm talking to go full music theory on this thing, <laughs> <laughs> what, what musical ideas was Braces. more useful in translating and which ones kind of had to get thrown out? That's a great question. Um, which, yeah, it is a good question. It's a thing to throw out is <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> you, I, mean, the, there's cert, I mean, there's definitely certain sort of tricks that you'll hear in the original films and you know that, that repeat themselves but but they were all sort of the choice to use those in the first place was had to be driven by some sort of story narrative you know purpose so I mean really what it comes down to is like what we use don't use what we decide to do on our own how, how far we stretch our own you know musical vocabulary really comes down to what the story calls for and in this case I mean this is a, it is Star Wars but it's a very unique story in the Star Wars world that called for something very unique and different. I mean, it's much darker in many ways. And so, I mean, it, it, in, in so many ways, it's like, I wouldn't say we abandoned really anything. I mean, it's always sort of in the back of your head, like, you know, the original mm. scores that made this so iconic. But, you know, we're, we're really looking at a new story and trying to take a new approach with the music. I think the, I think the couple of the things we do do is like a lot of the time we look at the way that, even things on timing, so like a couple of things that John Williams does, you know, a lot in the original scores is he, is like he, he'll, he'll often, the, the moments he won't score. So, so there'll, there'll, be, there'll be critical moments where, you know, like, you know, like where Luke is, um, you know, gets his arm lopped off and is, and, and, and like the music actually throughout that whole sequence, you would sort of expect it because it's so emotionally intense. You'd expect the music to be like going full tilt. It, you know, pretty much from that moment, there's there's very little music in that whole section up to like, you know, I'm your father. It's like it's it's a it's a, it's a very quiet section. And so I think a lot of what we looked at was like things like that of like the ethos of how it's done, of like saying like, oh, well, you know, how could you um uh, how, how could you sort of use the same kind of process, the same sort of uh, or, or where the where he often waits a beat after you know there'll be some critical moment or bigger line. He he often waits and then waits reacts. a surprising amount of time and then reacts. And the music's very reactive. And I think one of the reasons why his music is so successful in this film is is because it so goes with the audience. It so follows what you want. So I think what we're 
looking at a lot of the time with these games is is how can you how can you have the same feeling and the same sometimes it's it's less even the actual notes and more the the sense of uh, here here's here's how it follows the audience and it goes with us and so the music really it's it's with you it's with you as the the player as with you as the audience member which is really nice because it's like I think that and that's a lot of why I think it's resonated so much with people because it's sort of like the music gets you it yeah, gets what you feel exactly. so, which mm -hmm. is cool mm -hmm. it's from audience perspective. Yeah. Thank you.